Hello, the internet, and welcome back to the live stream. It is Tuesday, the 28th of July, 2020. This is day 28 of live streams all the way through the month of July, right here on the YouTube channel. Now, this concept, as I've said repeatedly throughout this month, this is not my concept. I did not come up with this idea. I'm running with the idea but I did not come up with the idea. The idea belongs to another creator on the platform known as YouTube. Uh, the creator is the Danny Black. I'm gonna put a little link in the chit chat right now where you can go and grab, where you can go and say, uh, nicely done. I like the idea of Julive. Thank you for coming up with the concept. I don't wanna take credit for it. It's not my idea. I'm doing it. But the man in the chat, the Danny Black, uh, he's the guy who came up with it. So if you wanna go and give him some support and some love. I've put a little link there in the chat. 28 days into July. Wow. And look, the funny thing is, the last day of July will actually take place on a Friday, the 31st of July, which does mean the very next day is back to regular scheduling without even a day off. So essentially, it's 32 days of live streaming on YouTube. And then, well, Actually, it's pretty cool because that Saturday stream will be a regular Saturday stream, whatever we decide to call regular streams. But then the week after, streaming from Steven. Yeah, streaming from Steven. You know we're gonna do the two weeks. We're gonna do first week on YouTube, then the week after on DLive, then there'll be a week off, which happens to be this weekend. And then we go back to the YouTube stream and then the DLive, then a week off, then the YouTube DLive week off. That's how we're gonna roll it. So that means that the first stream back, which won't even have taken a break, is regular. And then the week after, Orion Point streaming from Steve Ann. I am pumped for it. Super pumped for it. But today, this is a user request. Mindy, you've been very, very, um, what's the word? Very, very helpful and very, very um, thoughtful in coming up with these ideas of concepts for favorite things. Favorite snorkel spots, right? It's a simple one. I never, I, I, again, I did not come up with this concept. I did not come up with Jew Live. I did not come up with favorite snorkel spots. Perhaps I should just give this con this this channel. Maybe I should just give to give it away, and like anybody can decide what goes on in this channel. Because you might you're making better decisions than I am. Jew Live is a great decision. The best uh, favorite snorkel snorkel spots is a great decision. Very cool, very cool concept. Um, let's let's engage the chat and then let's jump straight into it because I've got a few, and I was thinking about this last night. My first uh, favorite snorkel spot goes way back in my history, which, yeah, it's kind of interesting. I haven't been there in many, many years. Well, I haven't, I've only been there. Anyway, we'll get to it. But I've been there a few times, but not recently, which is kind of when I've been sort of snorkeling most, right? Anyway, anyway, uh, back up in the chat. Hello, the internet. I began this morning. Robski up there. Hello, morning, Ben on. Hey, Rob, Mindy's channel. Hey, Robert, Ben on. Evening, Mindy. Uh, Mindy says, today's stream may be my favorite. I love talking about snorkeling spots. Right, right. And I and I said there, I remembered an old place. It's going to be good to check back because we're going to check into these spots and see how they look and see who else has done what over there. Um, Robert says, hey, Mindy, Mindy, whenever I finally make it out to Australia, I'd per be perfectly happy to spend the whole time snorkeling. I mean, yeah, there there is so many very cool places to snorkel in this country no no denout no denying and no doubting no denouting that that's right i said denouting no denouting that uh, mindy says crookhaven heads looks fantastic in some of your videos robert said great keppel island right right i've never been there but i've looked into it um just in regards to crookhaven heads it's kind of tricky where we are now at the at the latitude or longitude whatever the whatever the uh, horizontal one is the spot where we are at this point in Jarvis Bay right the Jarvis Bay region it's good but it's not great for snorkeling it's that's not to say you're not going to have a good time you're not going to see some cool stuff but if you go north from here and you go you know up where rob lives and you get further into the the tropics because we're not in the tropics here we're 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 south we're south of the tropic of capricorn cancer capricorn capricorn yeah um and so the waters are a little bit colder particularly down here at this time of the year it's southern ocean swells coming in and by the way they're 
they're banging in right now. It's huge out there and it's cold water. And also you don't see the corals and the, the brightly colored fish to a degree. You are, you do see some, but the further north you head, it's better for snorkeling. So I would, I would typically say Sydney and the southern parts of New South Wales, I would say they're good snorkeling. Are they great? No, the great snorkeling is when you head north. That being said, Jarvis Bay is beautiful, right? You've seen the places I've been to, and I've I've selectively picked places. I've 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 navigated the weather and navigated the wind, mainly the wind actually, um, to find spots which are going to be beautiful and pro protected from the elements. Um, I guess I should explain for those that may be watching here that don't know. I do snorkel mask reviews, or I have done. I keep getting comments about that on my channel. Well, you're gonna do another snorkel mask review. See, the thing is, it's winter right now in Australia. So whenever, so whenever my snorkel mask um, videos start popping, typically it's our winter because it's summer in the northern hemisphere, or or it's the warmer region, a uh, warmer time of the year in the northern region. People always ask me, you know, when are you gonna do more mask reviews? And a lot of times I get brands asking me, we need a we need a mask review done on this mask or this mask or this mask. And I say, well, great, but I'm in the I'm in Australia where it's winter, so I need to go north, like I said before, to the further parts of the northern part of the country. If not there, jump across to the Pacific Islands, such as Fiji, Vanuatu, all those Tonga, all those places that are in the Pacific uh, and closer to the equator. So, and I tell you, I'm not not going to deny this. I tell you, that's why a lot of the companies just send me the initial email. You know, it's like a generic thing. Oh, we love your channel. We've seen your videos. We really, we got a great mask. It's got this feature, that feature, this feature. We need a review done. And I say, well, great. Here's my quote, because this is where I live. This is where I need to go. And we need to factor in air airfares. And if I can't navigate a resort to host me, that needs to be paid for as well. That's when a lot of companies go, no, thanks. We were going to, we we're going to give you the mask for free. And that's when I say, look, I, I do this for a living. This is not this is not just me like if you if you wanted me to come and install solar panelings on your roof would you expect me to do that for free no i'm going to charge you for that i'm going to charge you for this and all the companies that i've worked with in the past have been the bigger companies because they have a budget for this it's called marketing right so those people and this is a side project or a side issue but those people that do reviews on youtube and say well i'm not going to charge anything because therefore it'll be a biased review that's completely and utterly inaccurate you should charge for your time and you should put a contract in place that says this is going to be my opinion of your product this is not going to be a biased opinion sure you can send me all the literature you have for your product send me all the key points that you think i should address in the video absolutely but this is going to be my video my take on your product now i guess this could be a live stream all of its own Maybe we should. Maybe we should duck in. Maybe we should duck into this tomorrow, where we talk a little about how to navigate brand deals. Bingo, right? We'll do that tomorrow. Otherwise, I'm going to go too deep into it here. But too deep into it. Um, but yeah, well, okay. So look, look. All I wanted to illustrate there is that the snorkeling at this particular spot where I live, Jarvis Bay, is good, not great. You are going to enjoy it. Don't get me wrong. It's not like you're not, you're going to have a shock of time. It's good, but it gets better the further you go north. So Rob mentioned Great Keppel Island. It's a place I've not been, but I've heard of and I've seen. And yep, we'll definitely bring that up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. Actually, what I'll do, I'll grab, um, I'll put these in. I know you guys. Uh, I'm gonna put these in here. But what we're gonna do, we're not gonna look at them yet until we get to the bottom of the chit chat, which is on the screen now. But we're gonna get to that. Um, and I got my place too. I'll pop my place in here. My place is the basin on Rottnest Island in Western Australia. Right, the basin. I went there uh, and, oh, I got another one, I got another one. Um, Turquoise Bay, Turquoise Bay in, um, um, what's the town? Shit, Ningaloo. What's the Ningaloo Reef on? Ningaloo Reef, Exmouth, there it is, bam. Ningaloo Reef, right? And, and I'll, I'll explain why these are my favorites in a, in a, in a minute when we get there. Um, but we want to talk about that. And yeah, and sorry, and Crookhaven Heads. Crookhaven Heads is very unique because... So 
First of all, Crookhaven Heads is the river mouth and the Shoalhaven River comes out of the Shoalhaven and it wraps around Crookhaven Heads where there's a lighthouse. So it's deep water. It's deep water around there, very deep. The boats that use that channel to come out, they go out and then they wrap around past the northern point where I surf and they go out to the deep water for fishing. So at that point, you're entering into some pretty scary waters. Let's be clear. Um, we got sharks in Australia. We know that. We've got great white sharks. We know that. They often hunt in those opening areas of river mouths. Why? Because there's a lot of uh, activity there. A lot of dead animals that get dragged down the river. Um, a lot of uh, f fish feeding on the dead carcasses, on the decaying carcasses, whatnot. A seal population. There's always seals at that point on Crookhaven Heads, right there where it wraps around. I actually did a, a YouTube story there recently showing the, um, the novelty wave that comes in there when the swell's big enough. Well, there's seals that live there. And what feeds on seals? Great white sharks. So all I'm saying is... That's a sketchy spot to snorkel. Not that people don't snorkel there. I see people there all the time. Me, I would choose somewhere else knowing knowing that there's not a lot to see there. Um, under the water, it's clear blue water. It's nice. But all you're really going to see is the rocky ledge and the green grasses. I've shown you them in my wave a day, right? That sort of stuff pretty much exists the whole way around well, the whole coast here, really. Um, you might see some octopus. You might see some um, some Port Jackson sharks. You might see some stingrays. It, I mean, it's going to be good, but there's much better to be had. That's all I'm saying. And I, but I do present the area nicely. Like, I make sure I get the, the sort of... It's funny, if you get an, a, a certain angle towards the water, the water comes up really nice and blue. And in a, on the winter... And I'm out there with my beanie in and my jacket and drinking some homebrew and I don't know, whatever, drinking Jack or whatever. I always make sure I get that nice angle that gives you this really, a real beautiful blue. It's a, it's a, it's like putting makeup on a model before you shoot them. They're going to look good without the makeup, but you put the right makeup on, in this case, the right angle and you get the blue. It looks really presentable. But is it that great? Yeah, but not always. Um, and then, yeah, uh, Mindy's asking where uh, Great Keppel Island is, and, and Rob was answering. Um, does the train go up there? No. That's that's an interesting question. There is no real train ride that you can take up that way. Um, morning, everyone. TKK in the house. Good morning. T Why do you get a cheers? I don't know, dude. I'm, I'm instantly reaching for my glass to cheers you. I didn't give anybody else a cheers. TKK gets his old solitary cheers there. Uh, that, pff, I don't know why I do that. By the way, it's really warm in here this morning. What's going on? I gotta turn the heat off. Millsy! Yo, yo, yo! Millsy! How you, how you going, Mindy? Ah, uh, Mindy. How you going, Millsy? There's Mindy. Hey, DJ. I gotta sneeze all of a sudden. Oh, shit. Someone asked me on YouTube this morning, have you ever sneezed underwater? Yeah, it's no different than sneezing out of water. Bubbles instead of air, right? I don't know how that helps for the coronavirus, though. Underwater? Are the fish getting it? Shit. Uh, Chadsky in the house. Timsky, Chadsky. Favorite snorkel spots for me is Isle of Pines. Now I've been there with Danny Black. Let's um, let's have a look. I'll put that in as well. Have I been there? I think our cruise was meant to go there and we didn't. No, I think we went there. Anyway, we'll have a look. We'll have a look. Um, -na 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 Chadsky, Milzy, Timsky, Chadsky, Latitude. Thank you. Thank you, Milzy. Uh, thank you, Mindy. Latitude. Oh, shit. This is going to be tricky. Milzy and Mindy, your handle is too similar. Oh, shit. Although Mindy's got her channel next to it there, which makes it easier. Chadsky, I've never actually been snorkeling, so I will not have much to contribute to the conversation. Ah, oh, Chad. You should go snorkeling, my friend. Hey, can I just do this, folks? i got to go and turn that freaking heat off. It's so warm in here. I don't understand. It's like the same day as yesterday, but suddenly... So warm back here. Turn that off. Get that out of there. Get that out of there. Too hot. Okay, that's better. Chad, uh, I accident incidentally I found the Gibbs YouTube channel watching snorkel reviews and just happened on the Wave a Day series. I mean, look, thank you, Chad. I gotta say, in regards to that, I've there's no denying this channel is dead, right? There's no denying that the the channel's dead. It's not gonna remain dead forever. You know, there is definitely a 
charge, charge, charge. There's an opportunity to revive this channel. That surfing content is definitely up there with it. Now, if I could uh, snorkel mask review every video I made, sure, I would see the channel grow. Like I said earlier, all of my snorkel mask reviews are branded content deals. I'm not reviewing just because a new mask comes onto the, to the market. Oh, can I ring up or email? Can I review your mask? I'm not doing that. The brands that want to work with me understand this is marketing. I realize that that's how my channel grows, right? The, the snorkel masks is what made my channel. That's what brings the views in. That's what brings the, the cash through, the AdSense. I understand that, but that's not what I made the channel for. So I need to stay true to who I am and continue doing what I want to do. That being said, actually, you know what? We should do this as well. How many more days of July is there? There's 28, 29, 30, 31. All right. One of them's a Jack review. We got two, we got three more streams to do. Tomorrow, let's do how to navigate a branded content deal um, successfully. Then the day after, let's do, um, I think that'll be the Jack review. Let me let me just have a look. Let me open up a calendar. Ah, oh, shit, let's not do that over there. Let me do it. Let me just do it here, folks, calendar. Um, oh, you guys, you guys can't see this good. Okay, so the calendar tomorrow, Oh, this is perfect, folks. All right, so tomorrow let's do how to navigate a branded content deal successfully on YouTube. And given my experience, that's gonna be clearly how I've done that. Not how everybody should do it, but how I've done it. Uh, then the next day, which will be Thursday, we will do um, is uh, the future of this channel, right? The future of Gives A Minute. In brackets, this is a dead channel. And then the next day, which will be the 31st, Friday, happens to be the Jack opening, right? Yeah, that'll be a Jack opening. And then the day after, we'll be back to regular broadcasting. Okay, okay, cool. Sorry, I just had to plan that out. I, I don't want to... This top, this topic of conversation, snorkel mask spots, naturally is going to always dip into why don't you do more on your channel? The channel's dead. How do you get brand deals? That's where it's naturally going to go. But that's there are individual streams we could do of their own. Um, but thank you, Chad, for saying that. Incidentally, I found the channel because of watching snorkel reviews and I just happened upon the Wave A Day series. Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. So if you're ever down in San Diego, you should check out La Yajola Cove. Now, I've done that searching once before, Mindy. That does look pretty rad. I also got to tell you, that looks extremely scary. I'm putting that in the list to look up in a minute. That looks scary simply because of... Um, in in uh, the in the ocean, the, what's the Pacific Ocean, which is kind of strange. That comes all the way here and then it becomes the Tasman Sea for some weird reason. But in the Pacific Ocean, the west coast of America, up certain spots, California, you've got uh, lots of um, seaweed that grows from the bottom, like from the seabed, it comes up in like zigzag and weaves and you see all the seals darting in and out of it. And there, that's a feeding ground for the sharks as well. That spot looks scary but it looks rad. So I'm putting that in the same category as the uh, the Northern Point here, the Crookhaven Heads. Incidentally spelled incorrectly, Mindy, it's not a K, it's a C. It's a C-R, Crook. But that doesn't matter, you'd still find it. Um, Timsky says, there are Southern waters that have reef that are quirk, that are a quirk of nature in that they are small tropical style reef. Yeah, that, like I said, you're not, there is definitely, definitely good spots here. I'm not denying that. But the further you head north, the more those spots become abundant. Don't forget you've got places, holy shit, if you ever come to Australia and, and you only stay in the metropolitan Sydney area, you've got a place called Gordon's Bay, which has probably one of the best snorkel sites in the world. And it's right there. Like You, you go to Bondi, then you can drive a couple beaches to the south, and you're at Gordon's Bay, and it's, I'll, I'm putting that in too. Not one of my favorite spots, but definitely they've got a snorkel trail. I'll bring that up as well. But yeah, Tim, I, I just wanted to be clear. It's it's not it's not that this is shit. I'm not saying that. I'm saying the further you head north, the way better this becomes. Um, aren't the cuttlefish in the southern waters? Cuttlefish, you don't cuttlefish, 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 yeah. There's lots of cuttlefish, and they're a, they're a freaky thing to see, right? When you when you first see one, you'll be like, what? A, where are we? What are we, on Mars or something? It's a weird-looking animal, right? Fish. 
Um, you could call an octopus a cuttlefish when they wrap themselves around you. Timsky, in a river I snorkeled along in Palm Beach, Queensland, lived a large octopus. It would follow me along a rock wall swimming behind me. Scared the crap out of me every time. Right. Yeah. Pretty much what I thought, Mindy. I was fearful a shark would end up following us both looking for a meal as they're known for bull sharks. Right, right. I hope I get a shark. Uh, what? You're going to punch a shark in the nose? Shit. Well, let's have a look at these suggestions, folks. The first one came from Robski. This is Great Keppel Island. So, Kippel Islands. They got the, the, okay, so there's a couple there. Kippel Islands is part of the Great Keppel Islands. Let's have a look at Great Keppel Island images, though. I mean, as you can see, right? This is like a big starfish in itself. As you can see, these places look incredibly beautiful, right? Beautiful. Like, you'd, you'd, you'd pick this spot. And you'd snorkel all around this stuff. You'd be hitting around here. I mean, it looks insane, does it? Does that not look insane? So Great Cap Keppel Island certainly would be one of the ones that I'd recommend. Look at the white sands there. Now, Rob, you've been here. And what parts of Great Keppel Island are the primo snorkeling areas? But that does look good. Let's just put the word Great Keppel Island snorkel. Da -na 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 -na. Kind of looks sort of like this this coral stuff that you're seeing here. It looks very similar to uh, Vanuatu and Fiji. Gilski, hey now, hey now, Gil, how are you, man? We're doing our favorite snorkel spots, dude. Oh wow, look, it's got a cave there. Very cool. Very cool. There's some fish you may see. Very nice. Very nice. Turtles as well. Look at this turtle. Yeah, very nice. That looks like an ad. That's a blurry photo. Crikey. Bad rendering. Yeah, it looks rad. It looks rad. So I want to talk a little about one of my first favorites, the basin in Rottnest Island. Rottnest Island is a little island about 22 maybe 25 k's off the coast of Western Australia. So we're on the East Coast here, but I did live in Perth, which is the other side of the country, the Western side. Beautiful over there for two reasons. Here on the East Coast of the continent, we've got lots of mountain ranges. We've got the Great Dividing Range. You heard Tim talk about this uh, yesterday. It's a steep mountain range that sort of separates the flat plains of the center of the country from the East Coast. The East Coast is like, rugged rugged mountain ranges we get snow here on the tops of the mountains it's rugged over here but the further you head to the west the less and less that happens and eventually you come to a big basically the the, the flat plains of western australia right just the whole thing just goes flat all the way to the coast more or less so what you've got is you've got a very low uh, very shallow area of water between the coast and this island called Rottnest Island. Now, it used to be known as Rat's Nest Island because there's these little marsupials called the quokka that they inhabit. They're only on that island. It's kind of strange, right? It's like a little... I'll show it to you. It's a little cute little... Um, it's a little... A cute little marsupial. Um, let's have a look at the quokka. <laughs> this guy. Very cute. And they're super, super tame, right? Super tame. Uh, super friendly. They just want to eat food. They're they're only found on Rottnest Island. Very very strange. Very cute. That's what's known over on Rottnest Island, right? So so when I lived in Perth um, in 1996, yeah, 96, 96 through 2001. No, th 2000. I went to New Zealand. Um, we did many trips across to Rottnest Island. I went over there once with the boys, probably a few times with the boys. Went over once, twice with different girls. Um, and we went snorkeling at a place called the Basin. Now, the Basin was so sick because it was beautiful, clear waters, some really nice fish, and also some really interesting caves that you could dive through, like... Like, not deep, too. You could... And this is all snorkeling, right? Not scuba diving. So you could go down holding your breath and you could pull yourself through these caves and you were in this massive chasm and, you know, you look up and you see, like, this big archway and you can go through the archway. Really, really cool stuff. Uh, this is what the place looks like. And super close 
proximity to anything, right? Like, look, look at this. You just, you just, you're basically just jumping off, and you're in these beautiful, beautiful, uh, golden, clear waters. Um, if we put in, I, I want to go back there looking at this. And I made videos of all this stuff too. I used to have an underwater housing. I had the Sony uh, Splash. It was called Splash. Splash mount, splash housing. I think it was called this. No, no. Let's just go 1995. Had this. It's like oh no. It was like um. It was yellow like this, but it was more. It's like this. I had one of these guys. Nah, you know what? Handy cam. Handy cam. Handy cum. Didn't spell it right. Oh, it's like this. This is what it looked like, but it was yellow. And I had to, actually had two. I had a yellow one and I had an orange one. Um, so I used to shoot. I used to shoot GoPro videos of the snorkeling, and I got it all. I got it all there. It's all coming, but it's coming slowly to a, a, a waiver day. It's coming slowly to from the Vault Friday. But um, if we go back over here and we have a look at Rottnest Bay, uh, sorry, Rottnest Bay Basin, Rottnest Island snorkeling, I'm sure this will bring up some interesting vision. <laughs> from underneath these little um, caves and stuff. So where are they? Oh, that's interesting. No one's got the caves. Let's let's put snorkeling caves. Almost like cathedral sort of style. Wow, man, no one's got video, no one's got photos of it. What? That's weird. Okay. I'm not seeing any, everyone's got the same f photo of the um the actual basin rotnest island let's just take out the word the basin because that could just be the front part front part i guess it's kind of like this kind of like this you cruise through a couple of sharks oh they got a shark cave gray nurse sharks on rotnest island it's kind of like this right you, you you skip through the holes like that like this guy. Yeah, really, really interesting. Yeah, that's probably a good shot. Mudgy dive and travel? No, that's probably not it. Night diving. Man, that'd be freaky. But yeah, that was a place that... You, people ask me, like, how long you've been into snorkeling. We've been doing it for years, since we were children. Um, never thought I could make a living from doing it, I'll be honest. Never thought that'd be a thing. Benny Crawford in the house. G'day, Benny. Oh my god, that is so cute. They look like they're smiling. Really cute animal, right? The the quokka. Unfortunately, they cop a little bit of abuse, or they used to. There was a thing that the kids were doing called quokka soccer. It used to be like a, a thing for people to go and try to kick kick the quokkas. And I've seen people do it when I was over there. They're like little rats, right? That's I guess back in the day they were they were even that's why that's why the island's called Rotnest Island. It was a mispronunciation of Rat's Nest Island. But they're not rats, they're actually quite quite pleasant quite quite harmless another place i want to mention um also on the west coast turquoise bay now i want to tell you a little story about this before um well, let's just have a quick look at it so turquoise bay in exmouth exmouth is a very interesting town there's not a lot up there it's like a city um oh that's got a it's like a city um but holy shit I, sorry it's like a city like a ghost town city but look at this man Look at the beautiful coloured waters here at Turquoise Bay on the Ningaloo Reef. This is, uh, again, the west coast of Australia, nowhere near where we are here. But I tell you what, and this, the story I want to tell you here is so sick. And again, we got footage of, oh, that's, that leads into the story, this turtle. So what was happening was we were up there with some, some old friends and um, on a road trip, we were heading further north to Broome. We didn't quite get that far, but we were headed up that way. And we were pulling into all these places to hang out and go snorkeling, much like what I would do here on Shaman from Steve Ann. And we pulled into the town Exmouth. Now, when you get into Exmouth, you get your supplies, and then you do this kind of like, you do this sort of loop up and back down to get onto the Ningaloo Reef area, and one of the spots along the way, Turquoise Bay. And we were camping there, right? You're not allowed to, but we were, we were camping there. And we pulled up to Turquoise Bay, just got out of the van, ran down to the water, and we're like, what, look at this. And this is what we were faced with, right? When we got there, like, look at this, man. Are you kidding me? Look at this place. It was like, this is insane. 
So we all got uh, our drinks out and sat down on the edge of the water. It was about, I guess it was about 4.30. And the west coast of the country, as you'd imagine, the sun sets over the ocean. You're going to get beautiful, beautiful sunsets. And as the sun was getting lower to the horizon, we were boozing up, drinking Jack, and got to that point where the sun was just about to touch the ocean. And I shit you not, in front of us, about maybe... 50 meters into this water. So we're sitting on this sand. We're sitting on this sand here on this image, I guess. We're sitting on this sand drinking and probably about here out of this out of the water. We just saw like little pop ups, like little things pop up. And I was like, and stood up in the sand. Like, What's that? Turtles, two of them popped up out of the water and we could see their thin little little hand flaps. Obviously, they're doing air things and getting back down under the water. And me and my um, me and my friend, uh, been boozing we grabbed our snorkels went out there and snorkeled with these turtles as the sun was getting dipping over the edge right it was getting gold golden sky and turtles swimming around and we were just cruising around with them we were pretty drunk it was like this is awesome so i've got a really really fond memory of that place simply because i was getting drunk and we were snorkeling with these turtles much like this woman here just cruising around on turquoise bay I gotta tell you, the rest of the area wasn't great for snorkeling. It was kind of sand and not much else. But just that one day and the color of the water and the the vibe was so special. Very cool. Um, Tim, snorkeling around Badera Island off Mission Beach is lovely. Mission Beach, dude, that's up near um um uh, uh, not Tamworth, um, Townsville, right? I hated that place, to be completely frank. We went up there, we, we did the trip down. I thought that was terrible. Terrible, muddy, crappy water. Um, it's lovely, great corals and fish and super clear water, except in the rainy season after a big downpour. I guess that must have been when I was there because it was garbage. Benny, good morning. Ben on. G'day, Benny. Timsky, down near Charlotte's Place in Port Ferry, Victoria, are some great snorkeling and dolphin places. But it's wetsuit territory as the water is cold even in summer. Right, there you go. And and at that at that point, you're not gonna see coral, you're not gonna see beautiful colored fish. You might see a couple of smatterings of little little blue fish, but if you go north, you'll see all that. You'll be in warmer waters and it's way more pleasant. Uh, what part of what part of uh, Queensland are you in? The Goldie says Benny, many snorkels options here and bull sharks, yeah, Gold Coast. Tim didn't know what Goldie was? What? For real, Tim? Um, so back up earlier in the chat was a suggestion of Isle of Pines. Now I thought that I'd been here with Danny, but I'm not 100% certain now. I think our ship was supposed to stop there and it didn't. Did she come with the ship? Oh, you! It looks rad though. Oh, look at this dudes. Wow. That looks pretty special, right? Crikey. Yeah, it does look pretty rad. Tim says, Ben on Cairns is worse, no nearby beaches, whereas Townsville does have beaches. I mean, that's that's kind of the dilemma I face, right? When I when I get approached to do a, a, a snorkel review and it's winter, like like no by the way, hasn't happened this season, but last seasons and the seasons before, I was getting the requests, right? So you either go you either go sort of north to a point, maybe where you said Townsville, and that's the kind of that's the point where you can't go any further, or you just go even further and you go to the Pacific Islands, Tonga, Vanuatu, Fiji's. You, if you're staying in Australia and you go to the Great Barrier Reef, you're not going to be able to get a resort and then walk out your door and go snorkeling. You've got to go out onto the reef on a day trip. So I liked, and I guess I could lead into this Isle of Pines style, Vanuatu, Fiji. I did have great times over there. Um, probably the, the most... The most insane spot that I went to was Vanuatu, Hideaway Island. That snorkeling, and I've done all the, um, I'll, I'll bring it up here. I've done all the, the videos of this if you wanted to search them. Hideaway Island, Vanuatu. Um, this place was so accessible for snorkeling, right? Like, look at this. Look, at look, look. let me show you a spot. This is a good good photo. So I was actually stayed in, oh, that's the that's the jetty. I stayed in a, in a, in a place on this side of the island. But this, see this dark blue waters here? That's like a drop off of about 50 meters. I shit you not. You, you walk out and the sand just goes, and you go, and it's a 50 meter drop into deep, deep water. 
But all along here, and you can see just the edge of it, there's rocky a rocky edge there. Maybe you'll get a better view on this image here. So again, this is, this is the, the landing point where you come in from, from the land. And my bungalow or my cabin was right there. And this, this drop off right here goes all the way around. But you see all this rocky area here, all these channels and stuff. Man, that was so sick. Incredible stuff, like fish everywhere, colors warm water no sharks maybe there's a couple of reef sharks but nothing no great whites that you're going to be really freaked about no bull sharks just beautiful and super accessible so vanuatu of the current places i've been snorkeling definitely is up there with one of the great spots hideaway island um unfortunately the crew that i i knew or that i know that owned that place or, or managed it they now have left they've got their own resort which they're working on um Stay tuned, stay tuned. They've got a, I'm not going to say too much about that. Um, Kira Reef is a good dive and snorkel spot, but too much is on it. But too much is sand on it now, beach access. Kira, let's have a look at that. Kira Reef, because that's a surf break too, right? Kira Reef, oh, uh, Kira Reed, what? Oh, I spelled Reef wrong, Kira Reed. Kira Reef, oh, that looks nice, dude. Very cool. Okay, that looks cool. I've never been. Looks cool. Looks cool. Now, here's Mindy's one, folks. La Jolla Cave. Now, this is the west coast of America. USA, La Jolla Cave looks kind of similar to. I mean, when you when you see this, you're looking at essentially the same water that we that us snorkel in, right? You're looking at the Pacific Ocean, but obviously a lot further north and different scenario. But look how rad this looks. Yeah, it looks rad. A snorkeling death at the cave prompts lawsuit. I mean, that yeah, snorkeling people, you know, you're going to die. You might die. Looks pretty busy there too. La Jolla Cave named the fifth most bacteria-ridden beach in the state. A lot of decaying animals there. Uh, when official... Hi, what scuba masks do you recommend? I'm not doing a, we're not doing a scuba mask uh, review here, dude. We're just looking at snorkel spots. But if you want to search the channel, there's plenty of options, uh, recommendations in my uh, reviews. But that's not what we're doing here today. Yeah, that looks rad, Mindy. I, I'd like to go there sometime, for sure. Yeah, it looks rad. So that other one I was talking about, if you come to Australia and you go to Sydney, let's just say, for instance, you're staying in the center, like what we call the CBD. I guess you'd call it the downtown area. We don't we don't refer to it that way. But if you are in the CBD and you're holidaying and you're looking at like Opera House, Center Point Tower, Harbour Bridge style, not far from there. Take a bus to Gordon's Bay. This is incredible stuff. Uh, Gordon's Bay is located south of Clovelly Beach and north of Coogee Beach, which all those are a little further to the south of Bondi Beach, which is the world famous place, right? Um, that's a shitty website. That's the sydney.com. But if you look at these images, let's go. Uh, there's a snorkel trail that runs around Gordon's Bay. So this, this, is a, this is a city beach, if you like. But look at, look at what you're looking at here. You can basically walk all the way around this headland and you can come down. These people are all following the snorkel trail, having fun. It's a very small little inlet. All the, this, this, these are like multi-million dollar housing here. Very cool stuff right on the coast of Sydney. As you can see, very, very popular. That's probably a pretty good shot of it. You can see, right? It's... <laughs> There's the city behind you. 
You're you're in you're in the metro metropolitan area, but you're accessing snorkeling. All these shitty photos. Look, they're not even. Oh, that's better. Yeah, so that's that's one that I'd recommend if you're coming to Australia and you don't want to travel too far. That's a good spot. Um, Benny, it's a beautiful place, Tim. The surfing around too, La Jolla Shores, Black's Beach. There you go, Chad. So, so you've never you've never snorkeled there, but you've surfed there. Timsky, the housing estate canals would produce great fishing, especially for sharks and stingrays at night. The housing estates up in Queensland. Is that what you're talking about? Sorry, my sentence was rushed. Uh, Benny, I used to spearfish along Coolangatta Beach through to Kira. I was amazed at the movement of the sandbars. I lived in Palm Beach, so I'd snorkel Corumban Creek and Tull... Let's grab a couple of these. Tulla... Tulla Bajira Creek. Timsky, I'm going to pop that in here and have a look. Tulla Bajira Creek. Tulla Bajira. Dude, that looks insane. What? Look at that. That does look pretty rad. Wow, dude. That looks insane. Mind you, mind you, Jarvis Bay. It's literally up, like, I'm, I'm like 10 minutes from this right, right here. We got some of the most beautiful, the very best things to do in Jarvis Bay 21. Let's, let me see, let me show you. Um, Oh, I've got one to show you too. I got one to show you. It's called Whiting Beach in Jarvis Bay. Actually, this is this has been um, I've had this on my channel before. This spot here, Whiting Beach. Beautiful, beautiful spot. Beautiful spot, right? Whiting Beach in Jarvis Bay. Technically not in Jarvis Bay, Bouderie National Park, but extremely extremely um well i was going to say the word accessible but you might that might put you in the wrong picture to get to the spot is about a 7k walk 7k round trip but if you have a boat that's not it it's not it if you have a boat you can get there easily but it's it's kind of worth the walk because when you get there typically you're the only one there Whiting Beach. Yeah, very, very, very cool spot. Very cool spot. Chad, I have no excuses for why I haven't been snorkeling. Okay, fair enough. Uh, my brother-in-law and nephew surf there all the time, Chad. There you go. Tim, the housing estate canals would produce great fishing. Yeah, there you go. I have no excuse. Uh, yes, Ben, on the housing Queensland housing estates behind the Gold Coast. Very, very cool. Um, Whiting Beach and Jarvis Bay. What was that website? 21 Things to Do. Let's have a look at that. 21 Things to Do. I missed that. Um, Jarvis Bay, we searched. Yeah, this one here. Let's have a look at this. Um, go to the website. A Londoner in Sydney. 21 things to do. So the first thing you'll see is Jarvis Bay um, is famous for white sands. The whitest sand in the world, apparently, right? A place called um, Hyams Beach. Uh, visit Jarvis Bay in winter or summer. Now, I'm doing this because it's up, up the street from me here. Jarvis Bay weather is pretty good all year round. We actually stayed for the weekend during the winter and still found loads to do. So it's winter right now. Don't be fooled by thinking Jarvis Bay is only good for summer getaway. There's loads to do in the winter as well. There is something very magical about going there in winter is it's very quiet in the area. It's true. If you're going in summer, be prepared to book in advance, which is probably why I haven't been there in ages. I usually plan everything at the last minute. Here's my complete guide, how to get there. Okay, you don't need to know how to get here, but okay, so here we are. So basically off this map, let me zoom, no we can't. I'm, I'm pretty much, just just north of where's my mouse i'm just north of here so all the places here that they're talking about and by the way whiting beach technically is not jarvis bay because it's on this side jarvis bay beaches make sure you v visit cave beach now i have not actually been to cave beach it's technically the other side of the bay but there's good surfing there we'll get there though we'll get there Buderi National Park, right? This is where Whiting Beach is. This is not it. That This is Murray's Beach. Beautiful, beautiful spot. Murray's Beach boat ramp for sunset because it's facing west. Heck yeah. Steamers Beach. Now, this is this is part of the walk to get you to Whiting Beach. Steamers Beach. 
Very, very cool stuff. Very cool stuff. Edward, I love your surfing videos. Can you please post more of them? Um, I'm waiting for my rib to heal, although there is massive swell right now and my rib does feel not... See, it hurts if I push it in there. Fuck, it still hurts, dude. That doesn't hurt on that side, but it hurts on that side. When I, put, when I push in, that hurts. Um, thank you, Edward. There'll be more surfing coming, though. The swell is big, right? But it's dropping off. I think Thursday looks decent. Um, go on the White Sands Walk. White Sands Walk? Okay. Didn't know about that. Nelson Bay Beach in Jarvis Bay. White Sands Walk. Okay. Blenheim Beach. Now, this is a good... Oh, I've done the White Sands Walk. Blenheim's Beach. Okay, cool, cool. Greenfield Beach. White Sands Walk. Yeah. Chinaman's Beach. Yeah, this is good. Been here with, with the kids. Now here we're gonna we're gonna have to hit Hyams Beach. Okay, visit Hyams Beach, aka the world's widest sand. So this beach takes the the record as being the widest sand in the world. Now, arguably, the entire bay is the same sand, right? This one little town gets the name. I guess one place has to have it, but theoretically, every beach along the strip is the same sand. So you can go. I take you down to uh, Red Point, which is oddly named Red Point, but it's got the widest sand in the world. It's the same freaking sand. Chad, the swell here is non-existent, dude. I got to show you a video, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna um, go Sang's Tunnel, right? You've seen this on my channel. This, I could take you to this spot. A bit of a walk, a bit of a hike, but worth it. Pretty rad. That's a nice HDR image too. Whale watching, yeah. There's plenty of whales out here at the moment. Perpendicular lighthouse. This is pretty nice. Pretty nice spot. If you can get that when it's not windy, that's pretty rad there. Jarvis Bay Botanical Gardens. Okay. Never been there. Best restaurants in Jarvis Bay. Hines Beach Store and Cafe. Okay, if you want to. Yeah, there you go. Pilgrim's Vegetarian Cafe. Cool, cool. The Husky Pub, right? Been there a bunch of times. Camping in Jarvis Bay. Caves Beach Camping. Very cool. <laughs> Honeymoon Bay. Okay, all right. Well, this is pretty famous, right? Very interesting little, little bay that comes in here. Very, very, very crowded. Like this place... You'd have, to, you'd have to book to stay there because you can camp in these places. You'd have to book like two years in advance to get a spot. It's just so busy. Green Patch. We used to go here as kids, right? We used to come here camping as kids. Family holidays. Jarvis Bay accommodation. Some accommodation. There you go. What I wanted to show you here, speaking of the swell, Chad, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to do this. I'm going to drop... I'm going to not use my phone as my stream. I'm going to airdrop... A couple of videos across to my Mac and I want to show you the conditions that we've experienced here in the last yesterday in the last yesterday this is from yesterday I'm just gonna airdrop these across then I can bring them up full screen sending sending receiving how good is airdrop when it works which is normally does uh, receiving seven items receiving Um, you end up with the latest Karen as from Bunnings mass conflict in Melbourne for the weekend. What are you talking about, Tim? Now, why is that pausing? Literally got to the halfway point. The circle went and it just stopped at the halfway point. Oh, there, go. there we go. Airdrop failed. Shit. Airdrop failed. I just said, how rad is it when this stuff works? I got a couple there. Um. Okay. Well, let me, 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 let me just take the one, two, whoops. Select that, 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 and that. I'll just send those ones over. Maybe, maybe it's maybe it tried to take a um a funky file. Sending. Very painful seeing people behave this way, Gil. You guys are talking about the mask situation in um in Victoria. Okay, this is now almost completing. It's weird how it's staggering though. I've never seen it stagger like that. 
Okay, it's going. Receiving, 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 receiving. And received. Okay, cool. I can put this back up here as my stream computer so I don't... So the stream can verify that it's still live. So let's have a look at some uh, swell action right now. Let me bring up these. Chad, it is big, big, big down here right now. I got... um. I got one, two, three, four, five clips to play for, for you. I'm going to make them full screen here. Let's go across this way. How we do this? We'll go cut this one, two, three, four, five skis. Let's go across to here. So this is out the front. You've seen this spot before. Very windy and very look at the swell coming in please get drone footage of it off the point hey if it's not raining i'll put the drone up for sure but like you you know this scene right you've seen this from you've seen me show you this many many times that is huge right now and heavy right heavy thick thickness look at that left Look how thick that ledge, that um, wedge is. Oh, that's one. I got a, I got five of these to play. That's one. Here comes the next one. Dun 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 dun. Hang on, let's make this full screen. Look at this left coming in over here, folks. Look at this. Jesus. See, also, I want to I wanna be clear. I would surf. Let me just go back. I would ride this wave, right? I would I would be I would be comfortable riding that wave. Two things need to happen. I need to be out there with somebody else. And also, the wind and the movement of the water needs to chill. But that size wave, I'd be comfortable riding that. No, no doubt about that. I'd be comfortable out there riding it. But we, it needs to be safety as well. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna paddle out on that when no, there's no one on the beach, right? And I'd go out there, dude. I, you would, I wouldn't come back. Did you have a look at my mini cam? TKK, I did. I'll address that in a second. I'll address that in a second. You could be getting epic drone footage. It's, it was pissing down. Um, and there's nobody surfing, dude. So the footage is going to be just the raw wave. Yeah, it's pissing down there. And the wind is super, super strong. Offshore wind, super, super strong. Look at this mama. I'd love that left though. That's a rideable left. That's big. That's that one. We got five of these to check out. Heavy stuff, huh? Heavy stuff. This is off the balcony, by the way, folks. Also, Benny, with the drone footage, because it's offshore wind, um, very possible that the drone would, wouldn't be able to wouldn't be able to fight back against that wind. That's the point. I got one more here. Why is that not full screen? Look at these big mamas coming in from behind. Look at these guys. Look at these two. Shit. Yeah, there you go, folks. That's what's going on right now. 
Well, actually, that was yesterday. That was yesterday. It's it's going to be getting a little bit tamer, which by Thursday, it's going to drop down to about two and a half meters and the wind's going to dry up. So I will go out there. But like I said, like, look, let me be clear. If there were crew with me, I'd sur I would have surfed then. I would have gone out then with crew, but I'm not going alone. I'm not doing it alone. I'm not going out there um, to risk my life to catch a good wave. I, I would be confident catching those waves. Maybe I'm a little rusty now. I haven't been out for a while because of my rib issue. And that kills me that it's still, that is still painful to push in. That sucks. But I have the rib, I have the padded rib vest. So hopefully that's gonna mitigate a bit of that pain. We'll see, see how it goes. Um, uh, Tim, good size waves, but longer ones will be a nicer and a longer ride. Right, Th these are big, These are this is big, man. This is a four and a half meter swell. Edward, I wish I could be out there. I'd, if you were here, dude, and you were go, you want if you were here and you wanted to go out, I'd go out with you. But I'm not going alone. Um, hey guys, we have a spot in Williamston called the Crystals. Arrow, this is Arrow Gamer. Common to find seahorses there. Hell yeah! What a temperature moment is 11 Celsius. She, yeah, that's cold. That's cold. Uh, in regards to the drone footage, um, Benny, the reason it's a bit sketchy is because the the winds are so strong and they're offshore, so. You can't fight against that wind on it with a drone. I mean, the the wind yesterday was peaking at sixty five kilometers an hour. That's probably the theoretically the maximum speed which you can get on the drone. So you're flying maximum against that wind and getting nowhere. And on a still day when it's windy like that, you'd bring the drone closer to the surface of the water to mac to minimize the wind potential. But then here, when you got a four meter swell, it's going to go for a drink, right? So. I'll check it. I'll check it after this stream. And if it is sort of suitable, I might try flying. Um, I can't hear... I can't hear any rain right now. So maybe I could go out there and get some footage. But folks, in regards to uh, the content here, the snorkeling content, what we're going to do is we're going to wrap that content up. I'm going to let you know how you can get my album, The Armageddon, for free. This is a promo video I've been running for this month in July. If you're interested in getting my record for free, this this video will explain how. Welcome back to the... Uh, no, not a slightly random daily song at all. This is not slightly random, and this is not a song. This is a video to explain to you the Armageddon and how you can get your own copy of the Armageddon. Now what's the Armageddon? It's my latest release. You know I've been talking about the music I make under the moniker of That's Um? Well, we've been discussing the latest recording. It's been taking place for the last little while. I'm happy to announce that today is release day, July 1, 2020. Why have I chosen the date July 1st for the release here? No reason except that everything kind of moved towards that being the end point of the recording process. And I figured for the whole month of July, I could promote this album getting it into your hands. I want to give it to you for free. That's the thing. I want to give you the album for free. So as of today and right through the whole month of July, there will be a link that I'll make clear to you either in the description here or in the chat. This is the link for you to go to and to nab the album for free, completely for free. You can download those MP3s and go to town. But the reason I wanna to talk to you more in detail about that is because I also want you to be able to get your hands on a hard copy if you want it. Now you may not want this. You may just want the songs and that's cool. But if you do want a hard copy of the album, you're gonna have to buy it and it's not like you're buying it off a shelf. I'm only gonna print the amount that people order. So from July 1, let's say through to July 30, right? That's the whole month. That's the order process. So if you put your order in any time in July, that means you are getting a hard copy of the album, but it hasn't been made yet. At the end of July, I will snap that process off. And if you've ordered, we'll go on and get those printed and then I'll ship them to you. Now the cost will be very, very negligible. I'm not looking to make money here. I'm not a musician. I'm a live streamer. I create content. I enjoy making music, but that's not the point of this. The point of it is to have a bit of a laugh. The only reason I want to do the hard copy is because last time with the second umming, 
So many people wanted a hard copy and I only had 20 made. So this time I'm not making them until I know how many are wanted. So if you do want to nab a hard copy, go to that link, do all the things there. While you're there, grab the download. This here is not the album. This is mocked artwork. This is the cover of the album, but that is not the actual album. On the album, there are a bunch of songs. There was a time when I tried to explain It was very blunt but on the right track I smoked him hard after a bottle of Jack And what I said I would never take back But he took it the way that a schoolboy would Without going too deep into the details I recorded everything Guitars, bass, lead guitar, rhythm guitar, vocals Duncan, Buzz Kingo, on certain tracks, he came down here and helped out, added his little bit to it as well. That's all listed on the liner notes in the artwork. Another reason why you'd want to get a hard copy. Duncan down here to help out with the music was so rad. It was so much fun, but he's not the only guest to appear on the album. Out here in the ocean, one day I was surfing with a South African guy who was holidaying in the next door house. And after a bit of chit chatting, we got hanging out and uh, he kind of said, oh, just curiously, do you happen to have an instrument? I mean, I've been missing the guitar. I play a bit of guitar. He came in, we had a jam, we wrote a song. It's on the album. That all came from surfing right here. Just random surfing with a stranger. It's looking for the dream. Today we're gonna feel like never before. Number three, tomorrow the same. Also featured on the album is the handiwork of Lachlan Sheehan. Now Lachlan is the sound engineer with Tracer. He did a beautiful, beautiful job at polishing a turd. He didn't just polish a turd, he rubbed that thing until it shone like Jupiter in all of its glory. Does Jupiter shine? I don't know, but whatever Lachlan did, he made this stuff way better than what it was. Locky, dude, thank you so much, man. Go and have a listen to this and tell me this doesn't sound audible audibly sonically insane. Locky, yeah! There's also a few cover songs in here. Now you guys wanted me to do Four non blondes, so I did that. That's in there. There's also a Pink Floyd cover, there's also an Omnis cover, right? I covered one of my own songs. of that stuff is brand new material for you to enjoy but that's not all you know me and music my favorite band is Ween I love the band Ween and so to make this release even more special I recorded 20 covers of Ween songs and it's on this album here the point of me showing you that is that's also for you as part of this package. When you download the album, The Armageddon, you get this as a bonus free disc. And if you order a hard copy of The Armageddon, you also get a hard copy of 10 more songs by Ween.
I've chosen to call it 10 more songs by Ween, but put 20 songs on there to be a little bit silly. But anyway, that's there for you as well. And I'll also throw in some Gives A Minute stickers for those hard copy orders. If you order a hard copy, you'll get some stickers. You'll get three things. You'll get the Armageddon, you'll get 10 more songs by Ween, you'll get a bunch of Gives A Minute stickers. I might even write a handwritten note on there for you as well. But you have to do it between now, July 1, and July 30. After July 30, there will be no more orders. Whatever it is, the number that we have, the amount, is what we go and order. There'll be about a month delay between when they get manufactured and when I can ship them to you. So if you order any time between now and the end of July, I would expect you to receive your copy of the Armageddon in September. That'd be the earliest. I'd say August will be the, the production then there'll be the mail out. I reckon September you'd get it. That's why there's the download link to grab the music right now if you want it. Don't come to me after July and say, I want the album, man. You won't be able to get it. You'll have to go to Spotify's and Apple Music and all that place to buy it. This is the one month of opportunity. It's July, the opportunity month. Is that enough promo? I don't know about doing promo for my own music. There it is, I promoted my own music. Now look, while I sit down and take a listen to both the Armageddon and 10 more songs by Ween. You guys can go back to the live stream. There's no, this is not a slightly random daily song. Just um, go back to the live stream. I'll see you there. You caught me having a cheeky sneak with sneaky drink there, but that's the Armageddon folks. That's how you can get it. The links in the chit chat again. If you want to nab it for the month of July, you've only got that opportunity after july is over you will not hear me promote this album you gotta you gotta download it for free in the month of july if you want it and if you want a hard copy you gotta order it in the month of july after july 31 days in july only three left 29 30 31 right you got that's it that's it we don't talk about it after that so uh, SM, SM Rap in the chat. G'day, Srap. My favorite spot is Isla de Enridio. That's in Vela, Vacruz in Mexico. Sounds rad, dude. What I just did then, I went outside and shot the ocean, and I want to show you what it's looking like right now. Um, and then we'll take a look at this uh, Veracruz Vera in Mexico. But this is what's literally happening out the front of my house right now. Let's have a look. It's a bit loud. So the swell has dropped off a little. While you're watching the Armageddon pre premiere, not premiere, promo, I'm out here scoping it out. It's a little bit cleaner. Check this out. What's going on behind this? This little left here. Less swell, but blue skies is nice, it's right, cleaner, Chad? Isn't it? It's a little bit cleaner out there, too. Another one coming in. Another mama at the back there. Oh, it's cold out here too, folks. Very cold. What's this guy going to do? Close out. Over to the right section here. Yeah, to it's totally rideable. Maybe got a little right here. Nah. It's good to know that it's kind of getting a little bit better, though. A little bit tamer. Some blue skies still. Oh, no, sorry, some blue skies again. But let's get back into the stream. There you go, folks. That's what's going on right now at the Kalbara Beach Surfing Experience from Gives A Minute. Happy to have shown you. I, I kind of like doing those little sneak out and get some uh, footage and bring it back live. Like It's, it's kind of like an extra camera angle. Pumping, that's catchable. Chad, man, if, if you were here, I'd go out with you. I'm not going out there today. I'm not... I'm, you should see this, and you've seen it on my channel, but you know what it's like normally. It's clean, the blue waters, the sand. That's just a, that's a washing machine out there. But let's have a quick look at this location that um, SM Rap put in the chat. I just bit my tongue again. Shit. What happened then? Hang on. That's weird. Okay, okay. Sorry about that. Oh, the chat. I just minimized the chat. what I just did. 
Ah, oh, shit. I just minimized my chat. How did I do that? Ah, oh, man. I just minimized my chat. Okay, this is... Hang on, hang on. I'm gonna... <laughs> Lucky I've got it here. Um... I'm, I'm literally typing this into Google because I stupidly minimized my chat and it's now off the screen. Look, I got, I got no chat on the screen, folks. I, I, all I've got is a staring back at me on the screen. I've got a beautiful, um, a beautiful flower and that's it. Um, so I'm going to type this in. Where is it? My favorite spot is Isla DN Media. So let's make this the last one, folks. Isla D M Media. M N Media. And Medio. This is the one. Looks nice. Oh wow, dude. Looks kind of like looks like kind of like Hideaway Island there. That looks nice, dude. Yes, that does look nice. Yeah, cool. Does she come with the island? Oh, you! Well, folks, there you go. That's our favorite snorkel spots and a little bit of a glimpse at what's going down. Kalbara Town with the surf. I've been watching it and it's supposed to clear up and still be a two meter swell by Thursday, which would put it in a reasonable... My, my favorite swell is a two meter offshore, a two meter, 2.5 meter swell from the northeast with an offshore southwesterly or westerly wind, and that's what's coming on Thursday. So I'm probably gonna go out Thursday. Um, but right now, I guess that's all we've got here on the stream. Thanks for that, no worries, Benny. Thanks for all your suggestions too, and thanks for enjoying, or thanks for engaging in this conversation about snorkeling and surfing. Tomorrow, we're gonna look at how to successfully navigate a branded deal and why I charge for my brand deals and why you should charge for brand deals if that's what you want to do on YouTube, of course. I can hear the outro music rolling right now. Thanks for a great stream. I'll see you all tomorrow, skis. Chit, 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 chit. That's tasty. <laughs>